Hey there, Clary Nerds. You know, one of the things I may have said over and over again in these videos is that a good teacher never assumes anything. There are, or might have phrased it like this, that the only safe assumption is there are no safe assumptions in teaching. So you always start at the beginning. Well, I find that I'm, a, I'm guilty of that because I've been assuming some things that you probably couldn't rightfully assume without some harm to someone somewhere. And one of those things is assuming that everyone assembles their clarinet correctly. Now, that is certainly not a safe assumption, especially for very young kids. So I'm going to give you my version of how to correctly assemble the clarinet, and I hope you find it beneficial, uh, either for you or for your students. Okay, we're going to start right out and talking about all the things that we're going to need in order to do it and to do it well. In order to lubricate the clarinet, we need a few things. It's very simple, but we should have them available. The first thing we're going to need is a nice cloth that we can use to clean up any excess and uh, also clean uh, any residue that's uh, existing in the joints of the clarinet. The second thing we're going to need is a clarinet. Duh. And the third thing we're going to need is a good cork lubricant. And I think this might be a good time to talk about cork lubricants since it's going to be one of the most important things in terms of the choices that we make as far as assembly goes. So, uh, without further ado, let's have a small reflection on cork lubricants. Well, I don't know how many of you have taken the time to actually meditate on cork lubricant, but it's very instructive. I've assembled hundreds, probably thousands of clarinets in my lifetime because of the particular business that I'm in in designing and creating clarinets and working on clarinets and customizing them. And so assembly is always a problem when you have a lousy cork grease or a lousy cork lube. Uh, I find myself and have found over the years that most cork lubricants are inadequate in many different ways. Some of them are incredibly messy. Some of them, uh, like, uh, for instance, the petroleum-based cork lubes that you get from the store, they deteriorate the cork and soak into it and eventually eat it up. And uh, that's not very good. And some of them are way too thin, so not only do they not lubricate well, but they'll actually end up causing the joint to stick. And uh, that's counterproductive to what it's supposed to be. Well, uh, after years and years of trying different cork lubes and looking around for different products, I found the best product I've ever found for lubricating clarinets, and it's what I use when I'm assembling six or seven clarinets for, for testing, uh, especially if they're brand new clarinets. It's a fantastic lubrication, and we sell it at Ridden Our Clarinet Products. It's, it's very inexpensive, and it's super, and I'm sure that if you decide to order it from us, you're going to say it's the best cork lube you've ever used in your life. It's uh, food grade. It's non-toxic. It doesn't soak into the cork and deteriorate the cork. It, it's uh, exactly the perfect texture for lubricating corks. Uh, not, it's not too thin. It's not too thick. It uh, stays exactly where it's put. And uh, it lubricates great. It lubricates great, and it doesn't break down, so it lasts a long time. It has all the virtues of the best cork lubricants without any of the vices that I can see. So I've been using it the last several years, and I can't tell you how, how happy I've been using it as a lubricant, and I highly recommend it for you to use whenever you assemble clarinets or any, any instrument that requires uh, lubricating corks. So uh, that's my uh, my little short lecture on uh, on the cork lube, and uh, you know many of you may consider it not important, but uh, when you go get a repair job and you have to have your corks replaced because they've they're falling apart and pulling away from the rest of the clarinet coming off, uh, then um, you got nothing to blame really uh, in most cases, but uh, the cork lubricant that you use that's begun to did you soak into the cork and deteriorate. The, uh, the bond and the cork as well. Uh, so anyway, this, this little guy right here will save you a lot of money and make cork lub make lubricating your clarinet and the clarinet assembly a lot better. The clarinet we're going to be assembling today is a new clarinet, relatively new clarinet. It's actually the wood prototype of a clarinet that we have designed, a B-flat clarinet we've designed for the market. We'll be selling pretty soon. So the corks are pretty fresh. Now, 
fresh corks are a little bit different than than older corks, and uh, I think it's probably instructive to talk about that, especially in terms of assembling new clarinets with fresh corks. Uh, corks are kind of over-engineered. They've got thousands and thousands of little bitty air pockets. So uh, when you first get the clarinet and assemble it, you're going to be squeezing the cork in, essentially uh, pressing the air out. So the cork's going to going to flatten. And uh, sometimes the corks are pretty tight, uh, but that's good in the beginning because then they'll end up fitting perfectly once the corks compress. But the one thing you don't want to do is take tight corks and damage them in assembly because then that's a big, messy repair job. So uh, anyway, that's where the lubricant comes in and is very, very important. So one of the first steps in lubricating a fairly new clarinet, one that doesn't have corks that are broken in, are as follows. First thing we want to do is inspect the sockets. Make sure that they're completely free of, of any kind of obstructions or anything like that. And the sockets up here as well. And uh, everything looks nice and clean, and it should be for a new clarinet. The next thing is to lubricate the clarinet. Now, you could use uh, some kind of device for that, but I'm just going to do it the old-fashioned way and use my finger. And then once I finish that, I'm going to use the cloth to wipe my finger off to make sure that uh, fingers off to make sure that I don't get the clarinet all goopy. Okay, so I'm putting some on my index finger and I'm going to lubricate all around the corks. And with uh, this particular cork lubricant, you can be pretty generous. Uh, you don't have to worry too much, and you'll feel it. Um, I'm trying to think what kind of the t what texture this is, but it's a it's a kind of a kind of a nice thick texture, and that's what you want. Uh, I can't tell you how good this stuff is. All right, and then, uh, so now I've got lubricant here now. So if this is a brand new clarinet, and, and, and you especially have corks that look pretty thick, like they're going to be pretty tight in assembly, then one of the things that's really, really important is not just to assemble um, the corks, or not just to lubricate the corks, but to also lubricate inside the sockets of the clarinet, make sure they're lubricated too. Because if the corks are really tight, it'll squeeze the lubricant down and press it down. And so the part that's going into the clarinet's not lubricated anymore. So I'm going to lube the sockets. And all this is going to make the assembly much, much easier. There we go. Barrel socket, and then I can't remember if I did this one. I think I didn't do this one. Okay, so there. So now I've got lubrication in all the sockets. Pretty neat, and I'm ready to assemble the clarinet, assemble the various parts. We're going to begin at the beginning by applying the base, assembling the base, which is the which is the bell to the lower joint socket. And one of the things I want to make sure of is I don't bend these keys here in the lower joint. So I'm going to hold three fingers here on this side of the F sharp, C sharp key, and one finger there. And you notice the this part is going to go in my palm right here. So I got a pretty good grip on the clarinet without actually touching any keys. The next thing is I'm going to take my bell by this end. And the reason I'm going to take it by this end, as opposed to this, is that I'm going to be able to push. And it's important when you're assembling the clarinet to push, but it's also important to also rotate and turn as you push. Never just try to push a joint on, just shove it on without any rotation. The rotation really helps assembly a whole lot. So I line the joints and then I push. And boom, now I'm assembled properly. And I haven't touched any keys or bent any keys. Now we're going to install the upper joint onto the lower joint. And this